that I can explain why intermittent fasting functions is this balloon analogy. Now we understand to lose weight, right? And more specifically fat, you need to be in a caloric deficit, not calories in calories out. Calories don't matter. It's, it's insulin and glucagon. It's literally just whether or not you're in an anabolic state or catabolic state. If you're in an anabolic state, then you're going to store weight no matter what you do. And even if you put yourself in a caloric deficit, suddenly you're not going to end up losing the fat that you want. Like you're going to end up losing the muscle mass, the skeletal muscle mass. So, and if you put yourself in a catabolic state, you're going to lose weight no matter what you do. This is all, this literally is all just based on insulin and glucagon. And if insulin is dominating, then that means hormone sensitive lipase is not active. And if glucagon is dominating, that means hormone sensitive lipase is active. And when hormone sensitive lipase is active, that's exactly what you want. So in this video, we are going to be reviewing what Dr. Mike Diamonds has to say about the simplest and fastest way to kill your body fat. Now, I already know that for the most part, usually most people don't know what they're talking about, especially when it comes to weight loss. So let's see what he has to say. Maybe, maybe he's a little different now. Usually for the most part, um, I don't really agree with too many doctors. I think most doctors don't know what they're talking about, especially when it comes to nutrition. Um, they might know what they're talking about when it comes to like surgery techniques and stuff, but they are definitely not taught about basic like endocrinology and how the body works in terms of weight loss and all that stuff. So yeah, let's see what he has to say though. He might know. Get into rule number one of the mechanical rules. Did you know that your stomach, it's an organ and an empty stomach is about 1.7 to 2.5 fluid ounces in volume when it's empty. However, when you fill that stomach up, it goes to as much as 34 to 51 fluid ounces. And the way you should see your stomach is a balloon. So rule number one is going to be intermittent fast. It is one consistency that I've had over the 10 years. It's intermittent fasting and the easiest way. Okay, so he's right on this one. Yeah, that's true. Intermittent fasting is definitely in, uh, this is what does elevate glucagon in this case, because time, you can either uh, elevate glucagon two ways. You can either do it through stimulating it quite literally um, using fat, which is basically meat, or you can do it the second way, which is time and letting time take over and making glucagon more, de more dependent or, um, more favored by your body in terms of time. So yeah, this is, um, that's actually very true. So that's a good one. That I can explain why intermittent fasting functions is this balloon analogy. Now we understand to lose weight, right? And more specifically fat, you need to be in a caloric deficit. But in terms of simplicity, what if we could just do something so simple that we're in a caloric deficit automatically? And here we have two cups. This one here is a cup of someone who has breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a snack. Maybe a bite of your partner's sandwich in the morning or drinking that extra Coke or Frappuccino in the morning. And this person's balloon over time is going to consume so much more compared to the person who just decides that they're not going to eat breakfast. And therefore, because of a lack of time, right? Because of time restriction, their balloon can only inflate by so much. No, okay, that's not how, that's no. Um, so no, th this is, this is, um, it's not calories in calories out. Calories don't matter. It's, it's insulin and glucagon. It's literally just whether or not you're in an anabolic state or catabolic state. If you're in an ana anabolic state, then you're going to store weight no matter what you do. And even if you put yourself in a caloric deficit, suddenly you're not going to end up uh, losing the fat that you want, like the subcutaneous fat, you're going to end up losing the, uh, muscle mass, the skeletal muscle mass. Once again, this is not, that's not what you want to do. So you don't want to lose skeletal muscle mass. So, and if you put yourself in a catabolic state, you're going to lose weight no matter what you do. It, this is all, this literally is all just based on insulin and glucagon. And if insulin is dominating, then that means hormone sensitive lipase is not active. And if glucagon is dominating, that means hormone sensitive lipase is active. And when hormone sensitive lipase is active, that's exactly what you want. So yeah, this is, um, uh, it doesn't know that, that part of what he's talking about. So not true on that one. Let's, let's see what he else he has to say though. And that's why intermittent fasting works 
So simply because of time, you limit the amount of volume that you can consume in a day. And now I'm going. Okay, no, that's not that's not the reason. But I mean, it's he is right though. Intermittent fasting does work, but this is not the reason why it works. So I need to explain to you what is the simplest way to follow it, and then also what is the fastest way. So whenever I start a diet, we simply start on a 12 hours fasting and a 12 hour eating window. So for example. If your final meal is at 8 p.m., then you should have your first meal at 8 a.m., 12 hours later, right? But as we know, as you start losing weight, you need to consistently establish a deeper caloric deficit so you don't hit any more plateaus and that you're losing weight consistently and that you're taking into account a thing called metabolic adaptation. In simple terms, your body will get used to the things that you're doing to it. So once I okay, what what he basically mean by metabolic adaptation, he pretty much just means your body is able to use fatty acid more efficiently, and it's not using glucose as much for fuel. So I don't know. Once again, this is not calories in, calories out. This is this is calories again are very selective. The human body is a selective thermodynamic machine, and if you throw insulin at it and then you say lose weight, you're not going to lose weight. You're going to lose muscle mass. You won't lose the weight that you want to lose. And if you say, uh, if you throw glucagon at it, at it, and then you say gain weight, it's, you're not going to end up gaining weight no matter what you do. So it's like, because hormone sensitive lipase is active. And when hormone sensitive lipase is active, you're going to go through lipolysis one way or another. I get to 2,500 calories. I will then go to 1410, right? Okay, so I'll, I'll at least agree. The intermittent fasting part is good. Um, I personally, I'm, I'm a little more extreme than this. I, I don't know if he gets as extreme as me, but I only eat once a day. I, I don't eat any more food after that once I eat uh, for my meal, which is basically only meat, and meat will be very satiating, by the way. Um, you won't need to eat anything else if you eat only meat, I'm pretty sure. Then you won't, you won't really have this problem. You don't intermittent fasting isn't even hard but i mean it depends it depends how long you've been um you've been doing this fasting thing i've done it for a while and obviously my uh metabolic adaptation is much fa much more favored for yeah uh, fatty acid burning not gl glucose burning at this point anyways Mechanical rule number two is going to be with each and every single meal, eat 50 grams of protein. Now, the rule you've always heard is eating one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Now, there is no downside to eating one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Even if some people say it's too much, there's actually more benefit. The only downside to eating more protein is if you have a kidney condition or a liver condition. It uh, kid okay, so the kidney thing, once again, that's not, um, science talked about that. I, I've ex explained that a while ago. No, that's not, well, actually I explained that in a video that will be coming out eventually. Um, no, that's not, this is not, um, kidneys are, once again, this is not a problem. This is not a problem. It's in the arguments behind carnivore, one of them is kidney conditions, uh, protein and kidney and kidneys and it's no that that's not a problem so if then consult your medical physician to be able to assist you accordingly but there's no downside on only benefits to eating one gram of protein per pound of body weight okay honestly you just you you don't need to be following numbers and i would i would say though he is correct you should be eating protein um i think protein is very very helpful and you should be mixing the protein with fat though which is otherwise saying eat meat <laughs> it's it's not that hard so I, he still hasn't talked about glucagon so i'm waiting for it i don't know if he knows it but most people don't know it most people don't uh, learn endocrinology honestly just watch benjamin bickman's lecture on the insulin to glucagon ratio and understanding that and it's like so informative it'll teach you everything that you need to know or you can just look at my channel and my channel uh, simplifies it as much as possible. He, he goes into a lot more detail, which may not necessarily be understood. A lot of detail, which most likely will not be understood unless you've um, taken biochemistry and if you, un and if you've understand, uh, understood a lot of the terms before. Three, 
that will assist us in losing this fat so much quicker. And this weight you're seeing here, and if you guys watch till the end, I'm actually gonna show you how to build the most amount of muscle possible. So if you thought these tips were- Okay, so there's a couple reasons why this guy is, um, he's like this first off, he already had a much better upbringing. And naturally when you develop correctly as an adolescent, you will, you will have this structure regardless. And you can sort of tell just based on his face. So just from an attractive face, an attractive face is already a really good indicator that this person has grown up correctly. Attractive is not attractive. Attractive is just not abnormal. If somebody has an abnormal face, it means they've had an abnormal environment one way or another. So we're good. The ones I'm going to share with you next is going to be incredible. Now, this is what five pounds of fat looks like and what five pounds of muscle looks like. Now, let's picture that this year, for the sake of this video, is a pound of fat. Now, research has shown, right, to burn this pound of fat. And the way they do it is that they burn the fat and they make a calculation to figure out how many calories is in this, right? How much energy stored is in this? And the number is 3,500. This is why you here to burn a pound of fat you need to burn 3,500 calories and in a Ah, man, he's really going on about it. He keeps harping on the wrong point. This is not how you lose weight. Look, if you want to lose weight and you want to lose weight, you can lose weight without working out. It's really not that difficult. It's all based on hormone signaling. If you understand hormone signaling, you will realize that there is a very good reason why there's so many people in the biggest losers uh, category who stay as biggest losers because it doesn't matter how much they work out it doesn't matter how much they cut calories they will suddenly start just gaining all of that weight back after the biggest loser event and then they'll gain even more and why is that it's because their hormones are completely out of whack you have to understand hormones this is not once again calories are not the thing that dictates weight it's insulin and it's glucagon if you want to lose weight, specifically you want to lose fat, you have to stimulate glucagon. And if you want to gain weight, then you have to stimulate insulin. It's either anabolism or it's catabolism. It's one of the two. Really simple. Really, really simple. Honestly, once again, Benjamin Bickman explains all of this. It's going to be on the aspect of maintaining muscle tissue. The caloric deficit will make sure that you lose weight. Resistance training will make sure that we build, if not at the very least, fight for the muscle tissue that we have. And with the thousands of... Okay, so yeah, I'll say that resistance training will increase muscle mass. Yes, that's true. So I can't argue with that one. Um, I don't have any arguments there. People are doing is that they just need to follow a good protocol. The one I give my clients all the time is called 10, 3, 2, 1. This is like the Bible of sleeping. So 10 hours before three, two, one. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to have to agree. Sleeping is very, very important, especially when it comes to hormone regulation. That's the reason why actually you, one of the reasons why, even if you uh, stimulate glucagon and you don't get enough sleep and your sleep is screwed up, then suddenly you can't actually uh, lose weight. And why is that? It's because your hormones are completely out of whack. Once again, it has to do with insulin or glucagon. It's primarily, once again, it's all based on insulin and glucagon and hor and sleep really is important in regulating those hormones. So yeah, I'll have to agree with this. Um, 10 hours before bed, no coffee. Um, I honestly think that you shouldn't ever drink coffee because coffee has tannins in them and tannins will steal your amino acids. And not only will they steal your amino acids, they will also steal your water. And if you know how important amino acids and water are, then you wouldn't want them stolen. So yeah, uh, once again, another phytotoxin you want to avoid. Three hours before bed, no food. Um, yeah, so I pretty much eat like early-ish in the morning. I eat around 10, um, maybe 11 sometimes. My time, I wake up at around 4.30 usually or 5 a.m. So yeah, I'm going to say that I'm, I'm going to have to agree with that one. Definitely. I know that sleep... Um, Eating before you sleep is very, very bad. Two hours before bed, no more liquid. I would probably say three hours before bed, no more liquid. I wouldn't say two. I would say 10, three, three, one, at least so far anyways. Um, yeah. I It's really annoying getting, getting up in the middle of the night and using the bathroom. And then one hour before sleep, no more blue light. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's definitely optimal. That is the most optimal, if if it's possible. I mean, obviously, yeah. That's that, this is what you want to do. So I agree. I definitely agree with that one. All right, all right. So that's Dr. Mike Diamonds. I think um, he's definitely on the right track. I would say that the intermittent fasting is works. Uh, he doesn't necessarily know the reason why. Um, I would say sleep is also very very important. He I don't necessarily think once again. He, I, he doesn't tackle on it, but it's hormones. It's all hormones. And he, if he if he learns a little bit about it, um, if he if he watches my videos, or uh, he just watches Benjamin Bigman for that matter, then he would he would learn really quickly. Like, oh, that's the reason why weight loss even occurs in the first place. And this explains why even people on The Biggest Loser, for instance, or many many other people, still can't lose weight no matter how hard they work out and no matter what intermittent fasting stuff they do, they just can't seem to burn it. And it's all because insulin and glucagon. It's literally insulin and glucagon. So just understanding that alone will make you lose weight like that. So yeah, once again, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you want me to review anybody, then please let me know in the comments down below. And if you found the video informative, please like, share, and subscribe because it really does help the channel grow. And if you want to see all of my videos ahead of time, please click the join button down below. And not only that, if you want to see my videos on luck and more so the anecdotal side of um, life, as well as uh, just asking me some questions that I can't necessarily include in these videos because they aren't as scientific and they're not as super informative in terms of the information based and like very heavily evidence based, please let me know and I'll make a video on Patreon. So once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.